So this plant behind me that appears completely leafless um, is actually not leafless. It's got some very small leaves, which I'll show you in a moment. But this one is called desert milkweed, and that's because it has a milk-looking sap. If you cut any of the um, stems or take any of your leaves off, then it will sort of bleed. It'll exude this very milky color, latexy sap, which is where it gets its name from. So some of its adaptations then. Obviously, it's got no leaves or just a very, very few small leaves. So it's, um, I wouldn't really call it microphyllous. It just doesn't have leaves to start off with. And the leaves that it does have are very few and typically only present on the new shoots. So it doesn't have leaves, but of course it's still got to photosynthesize. So it has green stems. So what you see behind me are the stems of the plant and they're all green. Um, one of its um, adaptations to stop it getting eaten are in the milky sap, there's a whole bunch of very bad tasting and sometimes quite poisonous compounds um, that the plant puts in the sap so things don't eat it because it tastes so bad. And there's very little that eats this except one insect, well, maybe a few insects, but one of the primary um, herbivores of this plant is the monarch butterfly or the queen butterfly. Both of them are in the same butterfly genus, um, but the butterflies lay their eggs on the plant and the caterpillars are able to eat the leaves and the very small um, shoots. They're immune to the toxins somehow, but there's not very much that eats this plant. So its primary adaptations then are um, reduced leaves, very few of them. So it has green stems. It makes a very sort of um, latexy sap, which will also reduce leaf loss and defend it from herbivory. So this one is the, what did I call it? Milkweed, that's it.